After playing dozens and dozens of cartoon based video games, I can tell you there's either one of two categories that they usually fall into. First off, them being absolutely trash, cheap cash grab to try and cash in on fans of the series and hoping that parents will say, hey, my son or daughter likes this game, this TV show. Maybe they'll like the game as well. Buying it for them for Christmas, things like that. They end up in the bargain bins rather quickly and are quickly forgotten. But the other scenario are sometimes that they are actually pretty solid games or, you know, just okay games, kind of forgettable. But uh, today I want to take a look at the 10 Cartoon Network games that I think are actually pretty well done and actually worth your time for going back and playing if you guys have never played some of these before, especially if they're some of your favorite cartoon characters or cartoons, they're actually worth picking up and playing. So sit back, relax, hit that like button because here we go. First up on the list today is Steven Universe Save the Light, which is an action RPG game developed by Grumpy Face Studios and Cartoon Network Games and was released back in November of 2017 on the PS4 and Xbox One and just recently in October 2018 for the Nintendo Switch, also available on Steam. Now this game is a pretty cool little, like I said, action RPG game here. It's got really cool elements of the show. It's got a great art style design here. I love the characters as well as some of the things in this game. It's got cool battle systems. It's got like turn-based RPG typical things here. You can do a uh, power-up, just items, the collectibles, the typical stuff you see from an RPG here, but with some of your favorite characters from, of course, Steven Universe, one of my favorite shows. Just a really well put together little action RPG here. One that I think is very solid. Not the greatest game I've ever played by, by any means, but it's got, if you're a fan of the show, you're, it's got all of your favorite characters. It's got things you can do. It's got a lot of depth to it, a lot of gameplay to it. And for as far as a cartoon-based game goes, it's actually really solid. One of the better ones I've played in the recent years. Let's be careful, everyone. Steven, check out your old man. Next up is a throwback to an old game I used to play while growing up, and that is Codename Kids Next Door Operation Video Game. And this was a pretty cool game. It came out on the PS2, the GameCube, and the original Xbox back in 2005. And it's a platform collectathon game. It goes along with the animated series, obviously. It's got a pretty cool little storyline here. It involves most of your favorite villains, the Toyinator, Captain Sticky Weird, things like that are all there. It's voiced by the original cast of the show, so that the casting is done very well. The voice acting is top notch in this. It's got a pretty interesting story plot line that goes along the lines with the show with all the villains, like I said. It's not the best game of all time. It's, the graphics are pretty dated by today's standard, but if you're a fan of the show like I was growing up and you like these sort of 3D platforming collectathon type games from that time period of gaming, it's not too bad. It controls well. The camera's not too in your face. You can actually do a lot of things. And like I said, if you're a fan of the show, it's right up your alley. The donuts to force feed all the kids in the world. <laughs> One of the most action-packed and coolest cartoons to ever come out of Cartoon Network was, of course, Samurai Jack. And, of course, it just recently finished up a few years ago on Adult Swim. Absolutely loved how they did that. Anyway, this game called Samurai Jack The Shadow of a Coup was released back in 2004 on the GameCube and PS2. There actually was an original Xbox version planned, but it was re never released for unknown reasons. And the game is an action-adventure game and it's kind of got this platforming and it's kind of got this combat based system going on it's got all these really cool enemies it's just like the show you follow the line of, of, of jack trying to get back to the past to try to take out a coup it's got all of your favorite characters from the show and series in it it's got a lot of moves and things like that it's really good really well put together game it controls well it doesn't even look that bad even by today's standard i've seen worse looking games of course it could be better but for a GameCube game, it looks pretty good by today's standards, and it plays and handles pretty well on top of that. A fun little game here. If you're a fan of this series, I highly recommend getting your hands on this one. I'd recommend the PS2 version, as it seems to be the highly rated version compared to the GameCube one. So if you can, pick it up on the PS2 and give it a play. One of the earliest Cartoon Network games is Dexter's Lab Robot Rampage for the Game Boy Color. Now, this is actually a reskinned version of a game called Elevator Action EX that was also on the Game Boy Color. This just has the, the characters and skins from Dexter's Lab thrown over top of it, and it was released by Ultron back in 2000. And it's just basically a reskinned version of Elevator Action, which is a really cool puzzle or action game here. 
And if you guys have ever played Elevator Action, it's actually pretty addicting. And for a Game Boy Color game, um, it kind of holds up pretty well because not just graphically, but it gameplay is so solid. It's just an easy game you guys can kind of pick up, play on the road. Maybe you're on the road trip, uh, pick this one up, play it for five, ten minutes, and not be bored of it. Unlike most other cartoon-based games, they're just you know text-based or whatever. This one actually has a little bit of bite to it, a little bit of gameplay. You can actually lose yourself playing this one. I actually found myself playing this one for a good half hour, get gameplay for it. It's actually pretty addicting. I remember playing this one back in the day and playing it an awful lot. So if you're a fan of the series, it doesn't have anything to do with the gameplay so much, but it is kind of neat that it ties in. And if you're looking for a cool little fun Game Boy Color game, then why not pick this one up and give it a go? Next up on the list is Adventure Time Pirates of Entridian, and this game came out very recently in 2018 for the PS4, Xbox One. I believe it's out for the Switch as well. Could be wrong on that, but anyway, this game is an action RPG, turn-based type of game with a cool little combat system and a cool, fun little storyline that ties into the land of Ooh, the characters from Adventure Time, and all the fun things that you know and come to love. Now, this game isn't the game that I thought it was going to be personally. I thought it could have been so, so much better. I was really close to being a great, great game. Um, it's got a great art style, of course, the characters and the combat. They're all things you've known to come and love from these characters and things like that. Voice acting is top notch. Like I said, it looks great. It plays great. It just could have been better. It's got a very similar art style feel to it than The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker from the GameCube, which I absolutely love that game. So I was very excited for this when it first came out. It's like this is going to be a new Wind Waker type game. It looks similar. It plays similar kind of things like that, but it's just nowhere near as good as that. But again, a solid little title here. It's not the greatest, but it is worth picking up if you're a fan of the show. You like the voice cast, you like the characters. It is worth picking up and giving it a play. It's not a bad game, but it's not the greatest game ever either. Ruined, my crown's gone forever. Gunter and the rest of my babies are missing. You know, just your basic average worst day of your life. <laughs> Next up on the list is 2006 Cartoon Network Racing, which was released originally on the PlayStation 2, but was also later released on the Nintendo DS in 2007. And of course, this is a classic, typical kart racing racer here. You've seen a thousand of these over the years. They're never gonna be good as good as Mario Kart, but there's some, this one actually isn't that bad. And it actually plays pretty similar to Mario Kart Double Dash in that you have two characters. You can kind of swap between them and they, you do pick up power-ups and yada yada like in Mario Kart. But again, this is actually a pretty solid little kart racer. There are much, much worse options out there. And this one actually graphically looks not too bad, especially, especially for the day's standards uh, back then. It's got fun little tracks here, and it's got representations from the Courage Cowley Dog, Cow and Chicken, Daxter's Lab, I Am Weasel, Johnny Bravo, and the Powerpuff Girls, and I think there's a few more in there as well. So a pretty good representation of characters and shows you may have liked back in the day, and uh, it's a pretty solid little action here. It handles kind of wish-washy at times. The, the tracks can kind of be hard to handle at times as well, so it's not the greatest racing game out there, but there are worse, and it's a little fun here. It's got good voice acting clips in it. It's kind of got little funny moments every now now and then and it's one that's worth picking up and playing just for a little a little while because i've never played it before it uh, picks one up on the ps2 highly recommend it hey watch it there Hold on time. Help me. Next up, we have another Adventure Time game called Adventure Time Explore the Dungeon Because I Don't Know. And this was released back in 2013 on the Xbox 360, PS3, Wii U on Windows, and later ported to the Nintendo 3DS. As the title explains here, this is obviously a dungeon crawler type game here. Cool little action game here as well. Uh, it's got decent combat, it's got a decent storyline, and all those things are great. Of course, they bring back the entire original voice cast for this, so it's voiced by the characters and they all sound great, look great. And it's got a good style of humor in this. Of course, the characters, you know and love them for so long. You've known, you've known them for a long time. The plot is a little thin, in my opinion. It could have been better. But again, these cartoon games, they don't usually have a whole lot in terms of plot. Usually more about the gameplay and them, whether they're not a good game or not. And this one's right in the middle of plot being okay. You kind of save Princess Bubblegum and, and you explore this dungeon. It's a dungeon crawler type game. Uh, they do a lot of these, like, old. they take an older genre of game, like a dungeon crawler, and they slap these newer characters characters on them that are familiar with with you know the younger generation and they kind of marry the two together and this one turned out actually pretty decent if you're looking for a little fun little funny game that's got your favorite characters from their shows in it then this one is definitely worth picking up it's pretty cheap to pick up on the xbox 360 and ps3 so i'd recommend giving it a try because i've never played it before
Another game that does that marrying of old school gameplay with new school characters and kind of mashing the two together is 2013's regular show Mordecai and Rigby in 8-bit land. And this is a kind of combination of different genres, it's got like action adventure, platforming, space shooting, top-down shooter, platforming, like a shoot 'em up. It's got all these different weird older genres of games mashed in the one with, with Mordecai and Rigby. The plot of this game is pretty simple. They get like sucked into an old video game system that they found or something like that, and they have to play through these older style games in order to escape and come back to reality. So they play through like these old 8-bit Mario type games, these old 8-bit beat-em-ups or 8-bit shooters from the NES days, and you kind of go through them. And they're actually pretty well done. It's nothing too special about any of them. They, none of them really stand out as outstanding half to play this, but it's a solid little collection here and if, again if you're a fan of the characters of the show then this is one you'll feel right at home at especially if you like this older style games those original Mario's those original um, NES beat-em-ups or shooters be right at home with this one on the Nintendo 3DS <laughs> Another pretty decent cartoon series has been Ben 10 over the years, and I've had plenty of Ben 10 video games on lots and lots of systems, but the most recent one that came out about the reboot was in 2017 for PS4, Xbox One, and recently on the Switch, and it's just called Ben 10. It's a decent little side-scrolling beat-em-up, as you guys can see here. Again, not the greatest gameplay. It can kind of get boring after a little bit of time, but if you're a fan of the series, you're a fan of the characters, you'll feel right at home with this one. Great voice acting, decent enough controls here. It's fun for a younger audience. If you're maybe a teenager or older, this game may kind of feel kind of ho-hum to you, but at least it's got some decent gameplay action to it. It's got a decent little storyline. It includes lots of the different characters you can play. It's many different variations of Ben and his transformation, so that's pretty cool. It's got a lot of going for it. It's just not quite a great game, but one I would actually recommend to a younger demographic and a younger fans of this show. Maui, oh, man! Maui, got that! <laughs> And finally for today's list is 2006 Teen Titans game. This came out on the original Xbox, the PS2, and the GameCube back in the day, and it's a cool, fun little beat-em-up game where it lets you play as all five of the Titans. You can swap between them in real time, and they all have different abilities and range tacks and different stats and things like that, and it's really actually a pretty fun freaking little game here. I have the GameCube version, but I've heard that the Xbox version is the preferred version in terms of graphic visual, but either way, one's probably good. The PS2 version is probably pretty well reviewed as well. Anyway, the gameplay here is solid. The game is actually really addicting. It's got fun gameplay. The beat-em-up style here doesn't really get too old. Lots of combinations you can pull off. You can, like I said, you can swap between characters on the fly for all different kinds of combinations of attacks. The enemies are kind of uh, kind of on the easier side, but still, you'll have hours of gameplay with this one. I couple that with the semi-decent storyline that goes in with the series and the comic books as well. And it's a pretty fun little game here and one that I recommend picking up and seeing and playing if you guys can find it for pretty cheap these days. Anyway guys, that's all I have time for guys. Thank you guys so so much for watching today's video. Let me know what your favorite Cartoon Network games are down in the comments down below. Make sure to start smashing that like button, sharing this video with the other friends. And check out my list of the top 10 worst and the top 10 best Nickelodeon games out there. Links in the end screen and description for that. But until next time, guys, remember that it's always KMAC time somewhere. Until then, take it easy and peace out. Right in.